Welcome to the Perspective Podcast. Joe Sway here. Uh, as you guys probably already know, I'm a fellow believer from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, presently live in Texas. I think it's the first time I've mentioned that. Uh, there are my little reads and lines. Um, my eyes are currently closed as I'm doing this. I'm not sure why, but we'll keep going with it. Um, <laughs> and we have Mr. Chase Brown here with me. He was uh, also born in Texas. I don't know why I say also, but he was born in Texas. He attended the University of North Texas. Uh, as an inspiring philanthropic creative, um, there are very long walks on the beach. Why that is, I'm not sure. Let's figure it out. Chase Brown, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm doing really, really good. Yeah. Had a really good day yesterday. Um, yeah, man. God's just funny with some things. Mm. And yeah, man, just some good time with friends yesterday and good time with the father yesterday at Upper Room. And so... You are. Yeah, man. Good old you are. So super, super good. But yeah, man, I'm surprised. Are you claiming Texas as your uh, birthplace now? Saying I, also missed, I, born I, I in knew Texas. I missed something, right? I was like, <laughs> I was like my lines don't feel Democratic right. Republic. There it goes. Yeah, Democratic Republic of Congo. There it goes. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. knew I was missing something, but I couldn't pin it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's uh but no, it's super good, man. Um yeah, how are you? I'm good. I feel like my my voice. Is it a sore throat? Is that what they call it? Yeah. A little raspy or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'll be good. I'm a yeah, grown yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm yeah, joking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're grown. I'm a grown man. Yeah, I'm a grown 40. man. Yeah. I don't, I don't get sick. I get tired. So. <laughs> but no, man, it's been good. It's been a good time. The rain stopped a little bit. Thank God. Uh, yeah, literally. And we're about to get some sun. So that should be interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, we just wanted to come on here and it was, it's going to be a short uh, recap uh, podcast today um, for you guys. So what are we going to be talking about? Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to share some fun times that we had with some of the boys that's been on the podcast already. So um, as some of y'all may have saw over social media, um, the boys Chaz Smith, Montel Fish, and Dante Lee, Dante Lee, were in town. Um, they were in town for a buddy's wedding down in Houston, but we got a few days just to be able to chill with them here in Texas, up in the Dallas area and in Houston. And it was just super, super good to be able to spend time with them. Chaz was here for about a week and a half, staying at the town home. Mm. And so it was really good just being able to do every day with him and be able to just hear even more of like what the father is doing in his life and also with us, like share kind of what's going on with us. Mm -hmm. And so, and then just have him there as just like a good source of encouragement and correction and Mm -hmm. as a brother, like it was just super good. And so, yeah, we'll kind of Mm -hmm. kick this off. We'll recap the whole trip, but let's start off with saying what was your uh, favorite part or what do you think was the most funny part on the trip? Yeah, I think there was. I mean, for us, it was. It wasn't really a trip because we were here. Yeah, yeah. But I guess for them, it would have been for their time here. Then trip. Yeah, Never mind. <laughs> um, I would say probably two things comes to mind. Um, one of the days we were here, kind of having. I think we had Bible study like twelve. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah, we were reading through Ephesians one and two. Um, I was upstairs. I was doing something. I think it was in the bathroom. I kind of heard them having a deep conversation. So I came down and I just joined them. And then we, a bunch of dudes kind of sat around the living room here talking. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, and yeah. then we also went to, uh, what's that place called? Um, Old West Cafe. Old West Cafe. Uh, shout out to Old West. Yeah. Um, had to give them a little bit of Texas brunch while they were here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so also those two things probably stuck out. I know for a lot of it, I was I was busy this past weekend. So You were? Yeah. Yeah, 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 we're. I, uh, I'm surprised you aren't bringing up uh, one simple question for the most funny part. What question is that? How big is your animal? Oh, yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> see, I, I, I wasn't there when that happened, but it was like a common thing throughout the, the whole time. So. Yeah. Long story short, Dante asked someone how big their animal was yeah. at In and Out. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that there though. But if, yeah. uh, if any of y'all are friends with him over social media. Feel free to ask him, how big mm. is your animal? But it was super funny. No, I think um, I think for me, probably the best time was um, down in, I would say down in Houston playing basketball mm. and being able to hang with like all the crew. And then Pat was down there as well, our boy Pat. And then a couple other um, artists were down there who were invited to the wedding, uh, Christian hip hop artists. And so it was really good to be able to get to meet them and get to know them a little bit. But 
We played a couple games of basketball. Don't ask me how I did. <laughs> Please don't ask me. But your boy Chaz can ball, that's for certain. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after a couple games, like um, one of the guys, JT, just asked a, asked a couple questions just to us that he was just being vulnerable and just wondering about. And just led to just an amazing conversation for like hour and a half that mm-hmm. just kind of went on and just talking about various topics, like some of the difficult questions in faith and career and humility and leadership and just trusting in the father and the things that are just like a little bit beyond our understanding Mm -hmm. and that could be classified, I guess, as uh, some of like the mysteries of God and things like that. And so it was just super good. And just obviously a lot of good things kind of came from that, Mm. but it was just good that (sighs) we were just able to have that time in the midst of just like a normal Friday. It was just in the midst of like everyday life and we're out there just hooping, playing basketball. And then those conversations are just like inspired and just created. Like it wasn't something that we tried to orchestrate or anything. It was just natural. And it's something that I just commend like, I mean, all of us that are in that group for of just like the amount of just intentional pursuit of the father Mm. and just everything that comes from that is so good. Um, I think the one other thing, that uh, sticks out to me, which, I mean, I just, I, I love the sunset. And so just uh, all of us being able to chill up on like the roof and the balcony, um, be able to just chill the first day that Dante and Montel came in town, um, just to be able to just reflect on like God's beauty and yeah, just enjoy it and have fun. And so it was super, super good. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and so one of the things of which kind of while we're hopping on here and as y'all could tell from the title of the podcast is um, accountability and specifically brotherly accountability. And the sisters who are listening to this, y'all can, I'm sure, kind of take some of these lessons and just apply it to, to your own fellowship. But accountability was a big topic that kind of came up for us um, frequently in, in Montel, Dante, and Chaz's time here. And a lot down in Houston too, and it's something that, um, for me, it it reminded me so much of like the benefit that comes with everyday accountability with the same people, mm. rather than just like deep accountability with various people like once a month and stuff like that. Like there's something deeper with doing life with the same people every day. And so what we wanted to hop on here was just kind of share some general thoughts about accountability and the benefits of it what it exactly means and um and just kind of see where this short conversation goes but Mm. yeah man i'll toss it over to you for opening thoughts on that yeah um before that i want to say shout out to austin too he was here yes thank you but he's like six austin cochran there he goes shout out shout out little bro (laughs) there you go yeah he was sending a lot of memes and pictures (laughs) Uh, he's a character times. man nah, he really is Goodness. um but accountability i think that's um i hear that word a lot in the church i don't know how it is how to use outside of the church but uh, i feel like you, you hear it a lot in the church or in sports settings mm. you know i feel that's a lot of times when i hear it and then speaking towards like brotherly accountability you know i think about people in your lives in the sense brothers that you can be vulnerable with you know share the different Things that you're going through in your life, you know, you can be honest about, be open about, um, and just knowing that, you know, they're not there to judge you, they're there to encourage you, uh, to exhort you, to challenge you, and different things like that, Um, you know, because accountability can have a negative connotation to it when, you know, there's not a level of maturity in the group, you know, let's say you're sharing something and uh, somebody uses that as an opportunity to go out there and slander you or whatever the situation might be, you know, yeah. that brings a lot of hurt. But when it's healthy, when it's done correctly, when it's done right, I think it can bring about a lot of great results. You know, I think about Erm, who, uh, Ermius, who we've had on the podcast. Yeah. Um, he has a group of, I want to say four, four guys, including him, there's five. Mm-hmm. Um, they're part of a, an accountability group. And they get very deep with it. Hmm. You know, every day they're texting something. Once a week, they'll um, get on on the phone and they'll talk about various things. And this past weekend, they were in Cancun. I was like, what are you guys doing in Cancun? That's cool. Yeah, they were celebrating their one-year anniversary of this, 
you know, accountability group that they've done. And Mm -hmm. um, hearing from them has just been a a time where they've been able to grow a lot spiritually, financially, um, they work out together. So they do a lot of different things together. They're they're doing life together. So they've really gone a long way in making this thing work. So, um, yeah, so I think it's something that has a lot of great benefits when it's done correctly. I don't know what you think about it. I, I think to pick up on your point, just about vulnerability, I think it's so good because it didn't really like specifically hit me until now. But like unless people are willing to be vulnerable, unless like brothers are unless they're willing to be vulnerable, like you can't keep them accountable to what they say they want to do and the standards that they want to reach to. Because from there, you won't be able to know when they don't reach that standard and whenever there's um, so, something where they're not reaching their potential. And mm-hmm. so then from there, you don't know what you should be praying for right. and be able to just intercede for them in that way. And then also just do practical things where if someone's struggling with a certain area, mm-hmm. um, if you don't know that, you're not able to do practical things like just check up with them, check up on them with text or just various things like that. Yeah. And so that was super, super good. I think... For me, um, I kind of said it a little bit earlier, but I think it's funny. I was talking with our boy Reward Mm -hmm. about this last night, but I think I was a little naive um, with the thought of accountability and community and group over the last couple years, where with me, one of the things I definitely try to pursue is vulnerability and intentionality with a lot of the, like, a lot of friends because I'm, I think I'm able to trust a good amount of people with various things. And so from there, I think in the position that God's placed me, I go around and I see, you know, a whole bunch of friends once a month, whether it's reward, mm-hmm. whether it's um, Bosa and all of them over at Mercy Culture, whether it's, you know, Pastor Joel, Pastor Josh with Gateway, um, whether it's Gateway Dallas Campus, whether it's Austin, uh, the Austin crew with Nick and Grayson like a whole bunch of different places. And I think God's placed me in that position for, for something that's bigger than what I know right now. But I was a little naive in that I was like, okay, I'm traveling around a little bit. I got these really dope people, really strong people in their faith in my life. But I thought that that was going to be enough for that accountability. Mm. And making sure that I'm following through with what I say I'm going to do and keeping me in check and also like keeping my pride in check. Cause I think there's something about seeing someone every day where it kind of cuts through the little bit of good act that they're able to put on. Mm. And from there, like see them in times where they're a little weak. And so at that point be like, Hey, in love, like, Hey, let's get better and whatnot. And so I was a little naive because I thought that seeing these people and going deep once a month was going to be able to provide that accountability. But what God showed me, like, while Chaz, specifically while Chaz is in town, is, like, there's, like, another depth of accountability and brothership, if that's even a word, (laughs) (laughs) that you can get to with talking with the same people on a daily basis seeing them on a daily basis and there's things where you know you have a conversation on a Sunday night and then two days later you're driving to Houston and a thought pops into your mind about that same conversation well if you're not going to see them for another couple months like Mm. or another month all right well you can't really talk to them at that time Mm -hmm. but if they're literally in the car with you at that point you could just bring it up and just like go deeper with that and just have things resonate with you and have it have an effect mm-hmm. rather than just something that's just kind of there mm-hmm. and good. And so I think that was a big thing about accountability is the fact that it is like a consistent everyday thing mm-hmm. that I didn't realize the importance of beforehand that um, yeah. I do now. Yeah, there is a uh, <clears throat> there's a verse that comes to mind. There's another one, but I can't find it. I'll make it really quick. I think this is the, my um, go-to verse when it comes to like accountability not so much because it speaks on that but i think there's a truth that's there uh it's found in first john uh chapter one and it says um <clears throat> speaking about god being light and it says if we say right that we have fellowship you know being in relationship with him with god yeah and walk in darkness we lie and we do not what practice the truth yeah but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. And I think about, yeah. you know, it, for me, it should have read, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, you know, we have fellowship with him. But it says that you, us walking in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other. You know, yeah. so I think that that speaks to, <clears throat> for me, I've always, I always thought of that verse of like, man, like you walking in the light has to be seen and done in front of other believers. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, because um, <laughs> sometimes it's easy as believers to be like, okay, this person has it all together. This person has it all together. But whenever you're in a place of community and accountability, um, <clears throat> you can walk in the light and be open about certain things and um, and just knowing that your brothers or your sisters, in this case, are not judging you. Uh, they're there for you. They're supporting you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just really walking in the light and practicing truth in light and in front of other people, you know, really getting feeling comfortable being messy with other people. Because if you don't do that, then... Mm. Because I'm called to bear your burden. You call to bear my burden. I can't bear your burden if you're not walking in the light with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're not being vulnerable, if you're not um, sharing these things with me, I cannot bear your burden because it's just something that you carry on your own. So, um, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely a lot of importance to that. You know, it's uh, it's easier to get things done when there's more minds coming to look at one issue, one problem, versus just <clears throat> you on your own. Trying to figure something out. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think one other thing that I just thought of is like, I think God can do a lot of good through general accountability. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something deeper that he can do with accountability with people that are in the same path of life as you mm -hmm. or that can, can just simply like understand your life and relate to you. Because that's something that I feel like as like, at least for me, and you can say if you felt this way over the last couple of years too, but with being kind of like a, you know, like an entrepreneur and doing the, you know, the podcast perspectives, you know, all these things on the side, mm -hmm. this thought has kept coming up over the last couple of years of like, there's not very many, very many people I could talk to that can relate and like mm -hmm. understand what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And like reward is one of them that I could definitely talk to is able to understand and a few others, but you know, people, you know, at work or the, or whatever, like, it's just, I feel like I can't really go as deep with them because I don't really understand. Mm -hmm. And so from there in having Chaz and having Montel and having Dante, like, gosh, I love that boy Dante so much. Um, and Austin, like having them in town, it was something where it was just like them kind of knowing what you're going through in some sort of way, even though we're all going through different things at various times, but they're able to give those words to you, give those words of encouragement, wisdom, prophecy, whatever, that apply directly to that situation that like you're going through. And so it was so cool. And so maybe that's encouragement to whoever's listening of like, go out there and if God provides a way for you to have not just believers, as your source of accountability, but believers who are like walking that same journey with you, mm -hmm. whether it's missions, whether it's children's ministry, whether it's leadership, whether it's creativity and something that's so good. And I think we can see that like with the Axel people too, with Jasmine, mm -hmm. Bosa and all them is like, I can just tell from the little bit that I've been around them, they are such deep friends. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think a part of that is because they connect on that creativity mm -hmm. and that level. So... Yeah, man. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's, like you said, especially if it's people that are in the same walk as you, you know, you're going to relate, especially if it, if it has specifically to do with, let's say we're both musicians yeah. and we're both going through something. It, it makes it easier to be able to talk about, you know, said things versus, you know, you're a musician and I work and I'm an accountant or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's a, yeah. it's a little bit harder for me to bring you into my world, whereas if you're already in my world, you know, it's easier to understand. So, yeah. Yeah, I can feel that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. And so kind of going from there, um, you know, kind of the last couple of things that we wanted to mention is um, me and Joshua are super excited because a group of us actually started out or started up um, accountability group or just whatever you want to call it of sorts of, you know, just some like-minded people 
who were also in the faith and strong in their faith at various ages too, that, um, you know, we're going to meet on a weekly basis and just have a chat going. Mm -hmm. And then from there kind of see what happens with that. And we're just super excited to be able to have this group. Cause I know for me, it's something God definitely put on my heart the first part of this year to get involved in it. And I'd been procrastinating a little Mm -hmm. bit, (laughs) pushing it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so thankful for the, for the guys who are going to be in our group, um, just for their heart and, taking initiative to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I know some of them could also relate in like the procrastination part as well. Mm -hmm. And so the fact of just like, yo, like let's get this time, day, everything just right now, just like get it down. And so we're, I'm, I'm super, super, super excited about that um, to be able to have that. And then from there, just kind of see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be a great opportunity for even people just connect. Um, Those of us that are in that group, you know, connect and speak about different things and um, a lot of encouragement because you never really know what people are going through, you know? Social yeah. media kind of <laughs> makes everything. I saw this picture. Um, it was a picture of an apple and then you could look at the... Ref- there was a picture... Okay, let me describe this <laughs> as best as I can. There was an apple and behind the apple, there was a mirror. So you could see one side of the apple... But if you look at the front of the apple, it was bitten. But from the reflection on the other side... It, the, it appeared as Yeah, normal. it appeared normal, you know. So I was like, wow, that's really, uh, <clears throat> that's really deep. And it is crazy because I was, uh, I was just minding my own business, scrolling through Instagram, and I saw this post. It says that my friend had posted, it uh, said, today's lesson, being held accountable may feel like an attack. If you're not ready to acknowledge how your poor decisions impact others, you know, so I mean, mm. I think those are just, um, you know, important things uh, that just kept coming up today that I just kept spotting randomly. And I knew we were yeah. be talking about this. So, um, I don't know. I just felt like, especially that Apple picture really painted a really good picture of our lives at times from the mirror's point of view, everything looked good, but on the other side, you know, this apple was already bitten and, and all of that. So um, it's good. I mean, there's there's an expression that says, um, that I like, that's like, check on your strong friends too, you know? <laughs> you know, your friends that seem like everything's going good, check on them too, you know, because they, they need it as well, so. Say it one time for the people in the back. Yep. Goodness. Um, I think the question that we can kind of end on here, give you the opportunity to answer first and kind of go from there is, um, what do you think accountability in love looks like Mm. what do you look like what do you think that you know loving people while keeping them accountable kind of looks like yeah i mean it's tricky Uh, i think there's there's definitely a dying to yourself there's a on both parties Mm -hmm. right there's a dying to yourself on both parties there's the not needing to be right on both parties Mm. um there is a um like I know this person's doing it for my good, not with like evil intentions and, and things like that. Um, that has to happen. Um, and I, I think, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really, I think it's a good expression of love, you know, keeping someone accountable because you're wanting to help them out because um, yeah. you don't want them to, you know, fall into harm. So those are just some of the things that come to mind. Yeah, that's good. I think with the intentions, I think that can go towards there needing to be that trust Mm -hmm. there and ultimately in there like the trust like trust in the father that what he has planned for you in this moment and for this group is for your good Mm -hmm. even though it might not feel like good yeah um because i know montel made a video one time of like sometimes things that are good for you don't feel good and aren't emotionally good but they're Mm -hmm. still good nonetheless Mm -hmm. And so I think I think trust is definitely a big thing of we I think I've said this before, this analogy of like this leap of faith idea is like so often we just try to play it safe and calculated where we try to like exactly measure and know like what's on the other side before we're going to take the jump whenever like sometimes like we do just need to take a blind leap of faith mm. and trust that God is going to honor our faith that we put in him and our obedience to him and take care of us. 
even if we're dealing with like flawed humans, Mm -hmm. but we're going to trust that they're obedient to the father by being a part of this group. And from there through our obedience that he's going to, he's going to bless that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean that word you use on flawed humans is like, you know, that's something that we we always got to remember, you know, because it's it's like, man, you're not getting it. (laughs) You know, you can't have that (laughs) attitude. Um, Sometimes it takes people longer to get something or see something. So, um, I think that's kind of where bearing with people, because people are flawed, because we're flawed, um, <clears throat> it's important to bear with people and love, you know, exercising that patience and endurance with people. Um, or else you're just going to be quick to cut them off like you're hopeless. <laughs> you know, Man, so. that, that bearing with people really, really hit because something that goes along with that is like long suffering. Yeah. Because I think that's a thing where like, us as men, we can uniquely struggle with this. Is like sometimes whenever we get into groups or something, we can come at it from the angle of like, hey, we all have problems. Let's let's try to fix this mm-hmm. rather than just being like, no, the purpose of this is not to fix our problems. It's to be in community mm-hmm. and to be sanctified yeah. from there. And like if, if fixing problems is like a byproduct of pursuing community, then like cool. But no, nah, it's it's to pursue long suffering, to <laughs> glorify the Father, and have that community. We actually so. <clears throat> in Bible study with uh, the one Herm does mm-hmm. yesterday. We we're reading through Ephesians four, verse one. Paul says, "I, Paul, I don't know if he says Paul, but I, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you therefore to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, um, mm-hmm. in lowliness, gentleness." Long suffering and bearing with one another in love, no. you know, so you can keep the unity of you know this this unity that needs to be kept. Um, so so there was long suffering, there was bearing with one another, there was humility, and there was gentleness. No. You know, all those things um, were kind of described, and we as believers, you know, we're called to walk in this kind of way. You know, this kind of living for us is a manner worthy of the Lord. So I think if we can approach, you know, accountability with that hard posture, I think um, that really goes a long way in being able to bless others. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the one last thing I'll leave us with, which is self-explanatory, but we're still going to throw it out there, is um, that any sort of accountability should be centered around the word mm. rather than something else. And so Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so in that, um, being able to yeah, accomplish what he set out for us to do. And so, yeah, we hope that is a valuable, encouraging for y'all. Um, but yeah, and hope these short podcasts that we're doing um, are fun in a way, I guess you can say. <laughs> There's some projects that we've uh, been working on that's uh, been taking our time away from the podcast a little bit, but we got some fun people we're going to record with here in uh, the coming weeks. And so definitely I'll be looking forward to that. Do you have anything you want to share? No, I'm good. But, but that'll be a wrap for us today. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this topic and this conversation. Um, if you did like it, please like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a rating, all that fun stuff. Um, if you would like to support us and the work that we're doing in the outreaches, you can go to our website that's going to be in the description below. Uh, or if you'd like to support the podcast and what we're doing through this, you'll be able to do that there as well. So again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Until next time, much love. God bless.